This is part three of our five minute daily devotions and today we are talking about sickness and death and in particular death. It's the third day we have dealt with this. Um, there's a text in the book of Hebrews that reads as follows. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, he took part of flesh and blood. He was manifest to us in flesh and blood. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. There are a lot of people in the world today that are fearful of dying. It's something that is real in their mind, a, a regular fear of death. I think it was Bob Hope, the comedian, who made the comment one time. He said, it's not death I'm afraid of, it's the preliminaries. It was Woody Allen, I think, who made the statement, I'm not afraid to die, I just don't want to be there when it happens. This is, seems to be most people's reactions. Death is something I'm not looking forward to. Why? Because there is a fear, a dread of death for these people. And uh, for the Christian, though, it's not something that we should dread or fear. In fact, we should approach death, as John Owen said uh, in his work, The Death of Death, we should approach death gratefully. We should come to it with a grateful heart. What in the world could I possibly be grateful for concerning death? Well, death is that place of the unknown. It's the place that uh, no one is sure about. And the only record that we have that is accurate about it is what's found in the Word of God. And so we study the Word of God and we can discover something about death. We know what happens to those who die who are outside of Christ. And we know what happens to those who die in Christ. And it's a completely different set of circumstances. Many people refer back uh, to the rich man and Lazarus who's, who one uh, opens his eyes and torments and the other is being comforted in the bosom of Abraham. And those are great examples. Others refer to the book of Revelation and talk about uh, various aspects of heaven and the destruction of the sinners in hell and, and things of this nature. Jesus Christ mentions a place of uh, eternal torment where the worm never dies. But for the believer, it's a different place. They enter into the presence of the Heavenly Father where they hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So we get the contrast. So for a believer, we ought to be grateful at least for a couple of things. One in particular is we ought to be grateful for the fact that in the providence of God, we were spared death until we were saved. That God mercifully saved us else we would have died apart from Him. Listen to what Paul said uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 54. He said, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? There isn't a victory in death. Uh, by death for death itself. The devil doesn't have a victory over us in death if we are in Christ. So Paul is legitimately asking, death, where's your victory? Grave, where's that sting? Where is that that's going to cause us to be uncomfortable in any way? A second reason we ought to be grateful is simply for the fact that we should be grateful that we've been preserved all along through this and that in our preservation, we've been able to serve the Lord this many years. Think of how many times you have uh, been to church. Think how many times you've heard preaching of the gospel. Think how many times you've been able to pray. All of the blessings that accompany a believer. So we can be grateful when death comes because we have been enabled by Christ to look to the world beyond with a triumphant joy. There isn't anything that should cause a believer to fear. Uh, we should rejoice in this. So, we need to put our trust in Him fully that He has done all things right by His holy will. 